Hi, boys and girls. So today we are going to read a book called Aggie the Brave. And Aggie the Brave is a story about Aggie's overnight stay at the vet. And let's see. Our author or the person who writes the words in the book is Lori Rise. And our illustrator, the one who draws the pictures in our story, is Frank W. Dormer. And we want to thank our publishers for allowing us to read this book. Aggie the Brave. A visit to the vet. Oh no. Does this doggy look so brave? Let's see. Aggie is going to the vet. A vet is a doctor for animals. Aggie is going to the vet to get spayed. Hmm. Mommy says this is a good thing to do. It will keep Aggie from getting sick when she gets older, and it means she won't have any puppies. I know all about doctors. I am a very good patient. I am always brave. Aggie is nervous. She tries to hide. No, Aggie, I say, be brave. She tries to run away. No, Aggie. I say, I see something silly. That dog has a lampshade around its head. It's a collar, Mommy says, a special collar that keeps dogs from scratching. So they wear this thing around their heads to keep them from scratching in case they have something on their fur that they can't touch. You do not want a silly collar like that, Aggie, I say. Aggie agrees. It is our turn now. I am full of questions. Will Aggie get hurt? What if she gets hungry? Can I wait here for her? The vet tells me Aggie will sleep. She tells me Aggie will not feel anything. Aggie might not feel hungry when she gets home, she says. I do not like what she tells me next. She tells me I can pick up Aggie tomorrow. Oh no, how do you think he feels that he doesn't get to see his pet the whole night that he has to leave his pet with the vet? Yeah, that can be a little scary. It's hard to leave Aggie. You will be okay, I'll tell her. Be good for the vet, Aggie. Be a good dog. Rawr, Aggie agrees. We'll take good care of Aggie, the vet says. I will call you when we are done with the surgery. Be good, Aggie. Be brave, I say. It's a long drive home. I do not feel so brave now. The long day. So he's just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. It is a long day without Aggie. She is not here to play. She is not here to read. The phone rings. I jump up. Mommy nods. Hello, I say. The surgery is over, the vet says. Aggie did well. She is resting. Thank you, I say. So how do you think he feels now? Yeah, he feels a lot better now he hears that the surgery is over. I put on my pajamas. I brush my teeth. I climb into bed. But it's only four o'clock, Mommy says. I smile big. If I go to sleep, then tomorrow will come. Tomorrow, Aggie will come home. So he's so excited to go to sleep because he knows when he wakes up, it'll be tomorrow and Aggie will be able to come home. Let's make popcorn, Mommy says. She picks a movie from the shelf. Mmm, yummy. It's a good one, but my lap is empty. Who do you think probably sits in his lap when they watch movies and eat popcorn? Yeah, Aggie probably sits in his lap, so he's missing her again. My bed is empty, too. <gasps> Aggie probably sleeps in the bed with him. I miss Aggie. I know Aggie misses me. She has never had a sleepover before, so she's never slept 
anywhere before except for with him. And now she's at the vet all by herself. Finally, tomorrow comes. It is time to go to the vet. I can't wait to see Aggie. She will run and jump. She will circle my legs. She will play chase. So he can't wait to see Aggie so that they can do all these fun things and that she's all playful like usual. But when we get to the vet, Aggie does not play. Aggie just lies down. Aggie, oh, she is lying down with a big lampshade on her head. Aggie will have to be quiet, the vet says. She has stitches. Aggie cannot run. She cannot play. She must rest. Bring her back in two weeks and I will take the stitches out, says the vet. So Aggie can't play or jump because she has stitches. So since she has stitches, we don't want the stitches to open. We have to wait until they're healed and that the doctor can take them out. So that means Aggie has to rest. At home, Aggie looks sad. I'm sorry you have to be a lamp head, Aggie, I say. But you have stitches. You cannot scratch. You cannot lick. You cannot bite your stitches, hm, Aggie says. Two weeks is a really long time. Get well soon. So it looks like maybe he made something for Aggie. He has flowers and a sash that says feel better and a picture of Aggie and him. The next morning, Aggie looks better. She gets up, she walks around, thunk, goes her lamp head. <laughs> so she's trying to walk around, but she's hitting everything. Whoosh, goes her cone head. Oh, goes Aggie the clown. Oh no, so her cone is just bumping into everything and Aggie's all confused. And then, whoosh, poor Aggie, she is embarrassed. I will rest with you, Aggie, I say. I get my fancy crayons. Aggie whines while I color. I pat her head. I get an idea. Oh, you are not a lamp head, Aggie. I grab my brown crayon. You are not a cone head. I work and work. You are not a clown. You are a lion. So he colored her, her cone like a lion's mane to make her feel like a lion. I show Aggie the lion. So he uses the mirror. <laughs> My lion dog sits tall. So do you think Aggie still feels embarrassed? No, it seems like she's a lot happier looking like a lion. Every day, Aggie feels a little better. Her lion head helps. So she's trying to get back to chasing squirrels and fetching again, slowly but surely. Finally, it is time to go back to the vet. The stitches go away. Aggie has healed well, the vet, the vet says. The vet gives her a meaty treat. A meaty treat for a brave lion. Aggie loses her mane. So the vet is taking the cone off and gave her a treat. She runs and jumps and she circles my legs. We play chase till it gets dark. So Aggie is doing all better and she's back to her normal self and she can play chase and run and jump and circle legs and everything. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that story and that is all. Bye. See you next time.